Introducing to South Africa at least, Gil, Gil, Gil? I believe it's pronounced Gil. Anyway, this is the Gil Orion CL18 3600MHz dual channel gaming RAM kit. With a slow adoption to DDR5, DDR4 is still pretty relevant. I believe it will be relevant for about another year or so before the full adoption. We've obviously seen AMD go full tilt in to DDR5. So DDR4's still got a bit of life. So Gil has sent me this RAM kit in order to test to be able to show you some of the results and talk about its performance. Now, as a little bit of a change, I'm going to look at this unit a little bit closer, but while telling you about the design. So the design of RAM is really important in its longevity. The first thing that I thought when looking at the design, it was very wish.com-ish or lucky packet-ish. It wasn't really mind-blowing looking at the actual boxing. Looking at the RAM a little bit closer, you can see that it has a unique design and it's not a copy-paste, which is generally what you see in the market where the same manufacturers would use, well, the same brands would use the same manufacturers and it's pretty much copy-paste of the same thing. So it was really cool to see a completely unique unique design in this RAM module kit. The positives that I noted from the design is that it covers all of the silicone and the thermal pads are there with micro venting. The metal for me is a little bit thin and loose and the plastic branding also covers the silicone, the actual effect of the design, which could be acceptable, but it doesn't scream to me thermal efficiency. And I would be worried if it's not a very good dense plastic that it could melt on the silicone. However, I could be wrong about that and it can be thermal grade plastic. The RAM is RGB and even though I don't really like the writing style that is a subjective point but one note about the RGB is that it syncs with all the programs that I tested it with. But when it comes to RAM it's really not about the design it's about the specs but more importantly the actual performance. Looking at the specs this is a dual channel kit so it is designed to work together the timings at least. Now there are other configs but this config is it's 2 by 16 gigs it is CL18 on the cat latency primary and it runs at a 3600 megahertz. I did test this with Ryzen as well as Intel and I noted no issues on base XMP on either. Now let's jump into the performance. Now, as promised in earlier reviews, we are getting more comparative data. So we're going to be looking at the Gil Orion CL18 in collaboration with the Patriot Steel Viper CL20. So we're going to be looking at a couple of tests. The first we're going to be looking at is the latency test on memory test 86. Lower is better. Now, the Orion's got a 45.61, whereas the Steel Viper got a 46.32. Note that this is on mem test. On to mem test 86 transfer we noted 43,369 Mbps for the Gil Orion and on Patriot Viper we had lower of 39,774 and you can see that review I'll put a link in the description or maybe above you right now. Now on to Ada 64 latency lower being better this is obviously with inside the operating system we had quite a difference in results here where the Orions came in at a 71.9 whereas the Patriot came in at 74.9. On to Ada 64, read, write, and copy. Looking at read, first of all, the Orion got 50,624 versus the Patriot of 49,093. On right, we had very similar results. On the Gil, we had 28,797 versus 28,761 on the Patriot. On a copy, massive difference there, 49,157 for the Gil. And on Patriot, we had 44,321. Now on a new data set, the latency for Passmark, we had a 42. Note that I will be adding to this. Lastly, we have Passmark overall and I think this is a good asset test because it does judge other RAM with similar configs and this hit 3569 which is quite high on their testing. On to the conclusion. Now, in my opinion, the build of this RAM is a little bit budget in its materials and makeup. Now, I did look at the website to see is this some sort of super fancy metal heatsink and I didn't find anything towards that. So I'm going to stick with my original opinion that it didn't impress me on design. The performance, however, was redeeming, but that boils down to price. Now, the price that this comes in at, 
2,400 Rand. Now that puts it literally slap bang right in the middle of every other RAM manufacturer at the same CL latency with the same mega transfers. And I'm talking about Corsairs, your G-Skills, your Kingstons and so on and so forth. Now I can say that I have tested this RAM and it does perform and I haven't tested those. However, I would like to see this RAM go at about 2,200 and that's purely on the design. But if it was under 2,000 Rand, I believe it would be a steal. I am really excited to test the other modules that come out from them, especially on DDR5 because it does show a lot of promise. But that's all she wrote for me, guys. If you do have any questions on the RAM or anything else, please feel free to reach out in the comment section below. But I'm gonna say this again and again. Also reach out to me on socials because when YouTube says someone's commented, I can see it and I comment on the comments. But when you comment on my comments and you don't at me, I don't see it. So I have to kind of search for it to see have I answered a question of a question. So please make sure that you are following on social media and you reach out to me in that way or just at me every single time on a reply. Guys, cheers. Have an awesome time wherever you are. Goodbye. The RAM that I have used in the past, or RAMs, I don't know what the plural for RAM is. RAM, RAMs, RAM modules, RAMs, RAM, just RAM. Anyway.